Before you can run a local node and sync a blockchain, you are first going to need a Genesis block. The Genesis block is the first block in any given blockchain, and it is the only block that is manually created instead of mined. You will never be able to gain consensus with any other node on the network unless you have a blockchain that is built on top of the exact same Genesis block as the other nodes. So if you want to connect to the main Ethereum network, you first need to get a copy of the mainnet's Genesis block. You can also create your own custom Genesis blocks and start mining on top of them arbitrarily, and then you're just creating your own blockchain. And things like the Robston Test Network are just alternate blockchains that are created from different Genesis blocks that developers use for specific purposes, like to test their code. The only reason that the Ethereum main network is considered the main network is because everyone has just sort of agreed that this is going to be the main Ethereum blockchain, but there's nothing inherently special about that chain versus other ones. So what does a Genesis block actually look like? Well, one thing that you can do is just inspect the block from the node console. So I'm running a node console here that's just connected to the Robston test network, and I'll run web3.f.getblock0, and I'll see like some information about the Genesis block. And there's a bunch of stuff that's displayed here, but really I just wanted to note the block hash of the Genesis block, which is this OX4194 number right here. So this data is being read out of a database right now, but because it requires a database, it's kind of hard to work with and share. So Geth has this really important feature that they can customly generate a Genesis block from a .json file. So if we wanted to create a Genesis block from a JSON file, how would we do that? I'm going to open up a template I have for a Genesis block and go over what each of the fields mean. So there are nine fields here, mix hash, nonce, timestamp, parent hash, extra data, gas limit, difficulty, coinbase, and alloc. Um, normally, when you look at any block, so let's just do block 1000, for example, you'll see that the mix hash is some 64 character string, and the nonce is some 16 character string. Now, the mix hash and the nonce are used to verify the proof of work that's been done on the given block. So you combine the mix hash and the nonce, and that is how you verify a proof of work. But because the Genesis block isn't mined, we don't actually need the mix hash and the nonce. These can just be anything. So normally they're just zeroed out, or the nonce is sent to some satirical number like 42, for example. The timestamp is just going to be a Unix timestamp in seconds of the time when the block was mined, so we can see the timestamp here is this time right here. The parent hash is a reference to the previous block in the blockchain, but because this is the first block, this is always set to zero in the Genesis block. So this is block 1000 that I'm looking at the data from right here, and I could see, you know, it's set to whatever the block before it was, but if I looked at block zero, you would see that the parent hash is zeroed out. And remember, the block hash of the Genesis block on Robston is OX4194. So if I wanted to look at block one, I would see that the parent hash is actually set to 4194. Extra data can be up to a 32 byte string, so that's 64 characters, that you just wanna encode any random arbitrary data into the Genesis block, or any block when you create the block. You can put up to 64 characters of extra data, and people will sometimes put like pretty interesting things in that field. The gas limit represents the maximum amount of gas that a single block can have. So the difficulty is probably the most interesting thing in this Genesis block. The difficulty represents statistically how many calculations a miner will have to make to make, mine a successful block on the network. So if the difficulty is very low, then it'll be much easier to create blocks. If the difficulty is very high, then it's much harder to create blocks. Now, the difficulty is used to calibrate the network to the amount of mining hashing power that's currently on it to keep the block generation time within a specific target time. On the Ethereum network, this is approximately 14 seconds. Now, the algorithm to adjust the difficulty is hard-coded into the individual clients themselves. So if you set the difficulty really low in a Genesis block, all of a sudden, and you're just running normal geth, the miners will have an algorithm hard-coded in to adjust the difficulty to keep the block time at 14 seconds. So they'll slowly be adjusting the difficulty up and up and up and up until the block time is 14 seconds. If you did want to make a custom blockchain that had a very, very fast mining time, you'd actually need to fork geth and override the difficulty adjustment algorithm and then set it to be something really low in your Genesis block. And then all of a sudden the blocks would come faster and faster and faster. The Coinbase parameter specifies the miner's 
account, the miner's Ethereum address, so who to send the mined Ether to. In the Genesis block, this is normally just a throwaway number because this isn't actually mined. And then this field, alloc. So this is something that's specific to the Genesis block. No other block will have something like this. And this is a list of key value pairs of accounts and then Ether that you want to initialize that account with. Some people will call this a pre-mine. So this, if this is in a Genesis block, this is basically pre-mining Ether and specifically giving it to accounts in advance. On the Ethereum main network, they had a pre-sale in Bitcoin. And then when they made the Genesis block for Ethereum, they pre-allocated Ether to every account that had participated in the Ethereum pre-sale. So if I wanted to create a Genesis block from this JSON file, I could just do get and init, and then the path to the Genesis block, which is just dot slash Genesis dot JSON in this case, and hit enter. And you'll see that get does create a Genesis block. It says successfully wrote Genesis block, and then this is the block hash of the parameters that I configured for it. If I wanted to look at, say, example, like for example, the actual Genesis block from Robston, I have a copy of it here. And you'll see that it basically has, you know, a lot of allocations, which is just for testing purposes. And then, you know, um, extra data here, the gas limit, the difficulty, and the mix hash, just like we showed earlier. It also has this configuration data, which specifies at which block it wants the homestead release to take effect and at which block certain Ethereum improvement proposals should take effect. So where EIP-160, for example, should take effect after the 10th block. And this thing called chain ID, which we'll get to as we get to um, syncing actual blockchains. Now, when you're syncing either the Robston test network or the main Ethereum network using Geth, you don't actually need to go through this process of creating the Genesis block because Geth has the main network's Genesis block and the Robson test network Genesis block hard coded into the client. So if you just say like, I want to sync the main network, it actually can generate that Genesis block. It's hard coded into the code base. But if you're creating a custom private network, you actually do need to generate the Genesis block on your own.